How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific 6 Eastern. It is Tuesday here on this program, and you know what that means. We've got a lot to get into, including the Raw Show from Monday night. The Cody Rhodes Show is what it basically was. I'll tell you all about that here today on the program. And, of course, all of the rest of the news as well. And uh, we got an update today on Shinjiro Otani. Otani will undergo surgery as a result of the spinal cord injury he suffered during a 0-1 show on Sunday. The promotion sent out an update on Tuesday, noting the surgery will take place on Wednesday, April 13, and is being done to, quote, prevent future deterioration. Otani incurred a cervical injury after taking a German suplex into the turnbuckle during a match with Takashi Zagira. Remained motionless on the mat after taking the move. Fans rushed to leave the venue. Ring ropes were removed, and eventually he was transported to the hospital. He's not been able to move his limbs since the injury. Numerous personalities from around the wrestling world have sent out well wishes to Otani on social media. Sending every ounce of positive vibes to Shinjiro Otani, said Adam Pierce. Join me in doing the same, if you please. Samoa Joe wrote, praying for you this morning, my brother. I know your spirit is too strong to be broken. Best wishes to Otani for a speedy recovery, wrote Chris Daniels. And Stardom's Kyrie also announced that she will be donating a portion of the proceeds from recent merchandise sales to Otani's recovery. So obviously the best wishes to him as he undergoes this surgery. No update other than that. Still cannot move his arms and legs. And... Uh, We'll see what happens after this surgery, but a uh, very, very sad story, and we'll give you updates as we get them, but that's pretty much all we know, and it's been several days, so it would be uh, time for some good news if we could get it. More after the break. We got the Raw Report. Mike Sempervivi joins us. A lot to get into today. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. A lot to get into here today. The Raw Report, as always. We had the Otani update before the break, and... Uh, and a lot of news. You guys seen Sonic the Hedgehog, by the way? I liked it. Mike, no? You haven't seen Sonic 2? I, I have not yet, no. Oh, my God. Where have you Do been, I have brother? to? I didn't see one. Oh, I don't know if you have to, but... Uh, I Is went, it for the uh, kids or for you? Well, it was for my my two daughters are big fans of Sonic the Hedgehog. They, they've seen the first movie a thousand times. So uh, we found the Little Fairfax Theater here, wherever we're at, uh, which was built in, I think, the 1950s. Hasn't changed since. And I uh, got tickets for everybody. We were going to go yesterday after the Filthy Show and uh, went in there, smack dab in the middle of the theater. Great seats. And uh, Hanalei lasted 30 seconds. Started <laughs> screaming. Mostly because like they were playing previews for these like war movies. I don't even know why. They didn't have kids' previews. They had, like, adults' previews before a kid's movie. So, like, this bomb goes off, and it's really loud. She starts screaming. We take her out of the, uh, take her out of the theater, and my, my wife texts and says, uh, uh, let me know when, when uh, something happy is happening, and I'll, I'll try and bring her back in. So uh, the movie starts, and there's a, a brief scene with uh, Dr. Robotnik, who is by far the highlight of the movie, Jim Carrey. And then uh, the next scene is, uh, you know, Sonic and his buddy are on a boat on a lake. What could be more serene? They're on a boat on a lake fishing. So I, I text my wife, okay, it's a pretty calm scene. Bring her back in. So she uh, brings uh, Hanalei back in, and Hanalei sits down, and she's looking at the screen, and there's, there's as she calls him, Sonic Hedgehog, and he's sitting on the boat. And uh, Sonic falls asleep on the boat. And so he's sleeping, he's sleeping, and all of a sudden he just falls overboard into the water, and Holly goes, ah! She starts screaming and crying, and uh, that was it. We got out of the theater. She never came back. So, was there uh, at least a pretty sweet arcade she could play uh, on? And, and, well, like, no, it's a little town, with... so they just walked all over. They went to playgrounds. She got her, her, uh, she got her money's worth. I sure didn't. <laughs> But anyway, Paisley had the, the time of her life watching this movie. Dr. I was going to say, is she unfazed by all that stuff? Does she try to help? No, nah, like, she, she, like she didn't like the spoiler or the, the uh, whatever they call them, the previews either. And there were a couple parts of the movie that she didn't really like. Mostly because the movie's so loud. 
Like, if we would have watched the movie of the house with the volume on, like, nine, they would have had the time of their lives. But they crank this volume up, and every time there's any anything loud, it's just like, it's too, it's ear-piercing for me. And I'm a 46-year-old guy who, you know, my hearing should be going, but my God. <laughs> so, yeah, Paisley had the time of her life. So I, I recommend the movie. Especially, uh, I won't give me spoilers. So a couple more years to go on the IMAX movie. presentations for the kids. Dude, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. All right, a couple of other news notes here. We have uh, Dave Meltzer gave an update on why Rey Mysterio was not on Raw last night. He had a medical issue, so I, I, won't, uh, I won't get on him. Although the funny thing is they didn't... They didn't. What, do you think he no-showed like Bandito did? Well, no, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. Yeah, you know what happened when Bandito no-showed? They go, hey, the guy ain't here. He didn't get on his plane or whatever. Instead, they spend a, they spend a week advertising that's going to be Rey Mysterio versus Veer, and then they do the show, and there's no Rey Mysterio. He's just not there. And Dominic comes out, and uh, Dominic starts doing the match. It's like, where's his dad at? You know, you don't like to see a kid without their dad. So he comes out, he gets killed, he gets murdered, and then you're expecting Ray to show up. There's no Ray. I don't think they had, they had mentioned one thing about where Ray was, at least with Rhea Ripley, who they, there was another advertised match they didn't do. Uh, Rhea Ripley wasn't there, but they at least told us, and I quote, she's in protocol. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't, I don't know. It sounds like she's going to be sent to outer space or something. <laughs> she's in protocol. She won't be here tonight because she's in protocol. So we're presuming that next week she'll be out of protocol. Are we to also to assume that means COVID since I don't know when I No, we protocol. don't know anything. So he's in. So, so it's not the concussion protocol or the COVID protocol, which are the only two protocols well, the, here's the we problem. ever hear they, of. They don't like to say the word COVID. They never <laughs> have. Nor do they like to say the word concussion. True. So my guess is it's either concussion or COVID. Because they're in protocol. <laughs> With Ray, I just don't know why they can't say it was a lingering effect from Veer and Dominic. He told Dominic not to do it, but Dominic said to hell with it. Um, I'm taking this guy on and then do it that way. I just I was surprised. Again, if they, I, who knows what this issue is? Maybe it's going to linger for a long time. But I would have figured they would have played it into Veer, you know, Veer's attack last week since they wanted to get him over as this killer. I mean, obviously, yeah, you'd think, since you? Dominic went out in the um, ambulance, that that was going to be the way. You'd, you'd think, think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, they didn't do that. He just wasn't there at all. He was nowhere to be seen. There were a lot of things that were unexplained in... on this show. And you know what? I hope. I hope next week. I hope Cody Rhodes comes out next week and he says. There's a lot of violence on this show. After all, Veer badly, he injured Rey Mysterio, and then Miz has to go, no, nope! in protocol. Because that's the gimmick. Cody uses all the banned words, and then he has to be corrected. That's literally what the gimmick is right now. He was on the show last night, and he said the word belt. And Miz, like, the funny thing is, we all hear these things and we talk about these things, but I'm sure that some of those, you know, stand-up for WWE blokes actually don't believe it. But uh, it's all true. And when when Cody mentioned that he wanted to win the belt, Miz literally said, and these were his exact words, it's a title. A belt holds your pants up. That was the exact thing that we had heard for years. And it was incredible to actually hear them use that terminology on Monday Night Raw. And he also said wrestlers, and Miz said, no, they're superstars. So, you know, the thing about the belt just used to be a heel line. Like, I mean, I heard Dick Slater did that with Rufus R. Jones. It's not a belt, Rufus. It's a championship, you know, trying to put some, you know, some some spice on there. And it's been said before, the fact that they take it to such an extreme is hilarious. But the fact that they're also talking about it, I mean, wrestling is a part of Cody's introduction. I mean... I don't know how long they're going to push this or how much they're going to go with this, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does stand out that Cody, he is the wrestler. He is the one talking about the second generation and all that sort of stuff. So it's not even that. It, I actually like well, it because his package. gimmick is that he is an AEW wrestler that has gone to WWE because in, in AEW, there... they say belt in AEW, they say wrestler. And you know what else they say in AEW that I can't say in the air, the S word, yeah. which he almost said and then corrected himself. So and his gimmick is he's an AEW guy. Well, I don't, I don't know about that as much as they're letting That's him his be. gimmick. 
Well, they're letting him be Cody Rhodes right now, or at least they're they're presenting him as WWE's version of Cody Rhodes, which is a lot closer uh, to, you know, what he's been doing than they do with a lot of other people. You know what I mean? So how long they'll let that continue on? <laughs> you know, I don't know. But it is a refreshing little burst of wind on their program with him there and doing this stuff. Yeah, the S word. I can't say it on the air. There's a radio show. Uh, do I have to mention this every week that we're on the radio and there's commercials? And if you're watching it on Twitch or YouTube, you're just watching it in an alternative yeah. medium. But we're a radio show. Well, you can't Turner, say that word on the radio. Turner S&P has not uh, let Unless us go with Mike. any of this stuff. It's, well, and Byline yells at me and suspends me and all that sort of stuff. So obviously we didn't get it passed through when we're able to say S on the radio freely. I'm sure that we will. Of course we won't. We're professionals here. You? You know, Granny the other day goes, she never listened to this show because of all my swearing, and I explained I don't do any swearing on this show. Didn't, didn't she used to like listening to this show because there was no swearing? I think, you, I think you ran her off, Mike. Oh, Tony Khan did. Well, both of you. Hey, anyway. I, never dro- I, I never dropped any MFs or Fs on the air. You have. No. Very close. We're going to head to a break, have. everybody. We're going to move on. <laughs> Wrestling Observer Live. Seems blokes here clamoring for this Raw report. Ah. Oh, God. What is this? What? What are they doing to you? Yeah, I didn't want to talk about this. And actually, uh, Dave wanted to talk about it last night, but I forgot to bring it up. The Spence Ugas fight this weekend. No. What's this idiot Strowman doing? Oh, boy. You saw my tweet, eh? Hmm. No, what was your tweet? Well, a couple days ago, he was trying to talk to a fan who said, man, what you do is so based, you know, giving him a compliment. Oh, yeah, apparently. this idiot. Yeah, he, he, he starts yelling at the fan because he's so stupid. Hey, yeah. listen, I mean this mm-hmm. with all due respect. This is one of the dumbest guys, like, in the history of man, okay? God bless the guy. But, like, he's so dumb. It's one thing when some random moron on Twitter or a bot starts doing the, the paid by Tony Khan thing. But this, this idiot actually thinks that Tony Khan pays Dave and I. Like, the level of stupidity to actually believe that is unfathomable to me. Like, I read, I read Twitter and everything like that, and, you know, I often think, this person can't possibly be real. And then you realize that they're actually not real. They're just an egg, an egg bot, probably sent here by Captain Robotnik, now they think about it. But this dummy... This guy, I got a, I got a two and a half year old who's smarter than Strowman. I swear to God, she is smarter than Braun Strowman. I'm not gonna say anything more about this dummy. What an idiot! Like seriously, what an idiot! Remember, remember that one thing where he said something he was really stupid about it, and he said something stupid on Twitter. This is probably like 50 times, and then like a bunch of people, you know, talked to him privately and he realized how stupid he was, and so he kind of sort of apologized, you know. So so the entire time, Shane McMahon was shooting, wasn't he? Yeah, of course he was. Of course he was. That was ribbing on the square in hindsight? Golly. Dude, I got a pair of shoes right here. These shoes right here are smarter than Strowman. Do you want me to go on? We need a presentation of things smarter than Braun Strowman. We, we need to have these. No, the thing a- should be find out what Braun Strowman is smarter than. That should be the real, you know... What is Braun Strowman smarter than? A dodo bird. I'm trying to extinct. think. I mean, I know Other. some stupid dogs. So there, there are some dogs that I would argue that Braun Strowman is smarter than, but I don't want to get on that rant again. Do <laughs> you ever figure smokes. out what dog you're uh, watching is? Great what Pyrenees. Dog watching? Yes. Said what you were watching about? a dog yesterday. Well, I was in a, a house white, with a dog. Fluffy dog. That dog was smarter than Strowman. <laughs> I mean, come on. How, how about the Twitch chat right now? How are they doing? YouTube you know, chat? You, know, you want to know who's smarter than Strowman? The YouTube chat. Well, damn. Ouch. Okay, can I move on now? Yes. Strowman, you are banned from Wrestling Observer Live. You're not allowed to come on. You're too stupid to come on the show. Do you understand? Ryan and Cumberland smarter than Braun Strowman. If you could figure out how to unblock him, you would bring him back on before Braun Strowman. Yeah, Honolulu's smarter than Strowman. Honolulu! 
and he's still a young man with his whole life to go. He's got a lot more to learn at this point. Braun, you know, those brain cells are going to start going one by one. And oh, John in Memphis oh. is way smarter than Strowman. He's a gimmick, but he's he's significantly smarter. Yeah, no Braun Strowman allowed on this show. Don't even ask Braun, whatever your real name is. I don't think Braun Strowman's your real name either. Should I throw that in there? You know who You're else just is mad. not? You can't control. You know who else is not Brian? paid by Tony Khan? Braun Strowman. <laughs> anyway, I was going to do Raw, but I wasted too much time talking about this dummy. <laughs> Friday's WrestleMania 38 Fallout Edition of SmackDown: 2.230 million viewers on Fox, down 5.5 percent from the previous week's episode. Second largest audience for the show since March 4th. 0. 0.60 rating in the 18 to 49 demo, down 4.8 percent from the previous week. And much of other stuff here. I'm still on Strowman. I'm I know. This, this is really annoying you, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, are you got to be kidding me. Is it just his stupidity? Is it the fact that this stupid thing is being repeated again by somebody? Is it just him in general and his hair? Or, you know, is it Well, just no, I have nothing against the guy personally. But the fact of the matter is, if you're so dumb that you believe... That Tony Khan is actually paying Dave and I. It's one thing to be some dumb fan on the internet. But, bro, you're in the business. You have connections. You could very easily find out if this is true or not. What, were you on Reddit and you saw the, the fake invoice? Like, the fakest invoice that you could ever possibly Photoshop together that had Dave and I getting paid or whatever? Uh, you believe Tony Khan's tweet the other day by, by my $200,000 a month paycheck? I mean, come on. This is, this is insane stupidity. I will apologize for calling Braun an idiot if he smartens up about how stupid he is about this. You don't understand, you don't understand what I'm saying? If you, if you smarten up, I will no longer call you stupid. But until then, idiot. Now, do you how do you also, believe this? How do you, you believe this? Do you also need an apology out of him or just the acceptance? I don't need an apology. I don't need an apology. Just the acceptance that he's an idiot is no, enough No, I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm just, I can't wrap my head around this. Being so dumb that you would actually believe that. I got to find e this stupid interview. Where did he say this? EC3. Somebody give me a link to this interview. EC3 has been on this show, correct? Yes. He's in the promotion with EC3. Yes. Is he then thinking that EC3 is a bought and paid for stooge because he appeared on this program I don't know. with you? I don't know. You got some answers, Braun. Uh, maybe you want to hear them. Not on this show because you're not coming on, but uh, maybe you're, you're throwing more people than you think under the bus with such a comment. Hey, listen. Tuning their integrity. Hey, that's fine. If, you, if you're that dumb, then that's on you, not on me. Rampage did 600,000, up 31.6% from the previous week. Best audience for the show since January 28. Fourth on cable in the 18-49 to 49 demo with a .25 rating. Ties a January 28th episode for Rampage's highest rating in the, in the demo. I was just reading on the internet about how, uh, oh, Rampage is doing terrible because it's taped. People won't watch if they know the spoilers. What? Meanwhile, we got 600,000 viewers and a .25 here for a taped show. <laughs> is it the problem maybe it, maybe it's the fact that 10? it's on friday nights at 10 yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and now are these aew fans that are leading this charge on well we got to be live we, we you know f it let's do it live that's what we need to do is no, that no. what it oh, is dagan dagan sent me the article let me find uh, this article here thank you dagan i can't believe i i'm wasting time on this well but you know what, what comes after is the raw report so it's understandable yeah. Well, that's all. That's the most of the news anyway, aside from the uh, news that Chris Dickinson, uh, his dream has come true, making New Japan his pro wrestling home, officially signed an agreement with New Japan, allows him to work indies in the U.S. and internationally. So uh, he is God bless proud his soul in his in his Instagram thing. He's like, there's all these people that wanted me to sign elsewhere. And I, I'm sure that there were people that said, man, I'd love to see an AEW or something like that. I think any Chris Dickinson fan, though, who's watched this guy and seen him throughout Evolve and all the stuff that he does like that dude is a New Japan dude. That dude is a Japanese wrestling dude. So I'm really happy he's got his chance in the promotion that he always wanted to go for. All right, Braun, this is from uh, Ringside News. 
Uh, recently joined the bandwagon of wrestlers and fans who mocked Tony Khan for his tweet about a network of bots disparaging AEW. Strowman called out Khan once again. He claimed Tony Khan pays dirt cheat writers and claims his wrestlers are free to work where they want. That is not the case, he noted. Strowman criticized Khan for blackballing AEW talent for appearing in the Control Your Narrative promotion. Gee, why would he do that? This is the same guy said, maybe I'll read in the Braun voice. This is the same guy that pays the dirt sheets and says his wrestlers are free to do whatever, but blackballed, two words, by the way, them from CYN shows. Why? Because we're an effing threat. That was more of Vince McMahon impression. <laughs> you read that like you got blue balls. <laughs> Man, look at this guy. He told a fan that watching Dynamite was, quote, punishment. So why are you watching it then, you dummy? <laughs> What else did he say here? Anything else? No, nah, that's about it for here. Yeah. He's one of those guys that doesn't want to watch it. It's it's punishment, but he watches anyway, apparently. Hate watching? Yeah. Oh, there's people that hate listening to this show and things like that, you know. Of course, those people always forget. What I hope doing. he it's hates just... listening to this show and is forced to against his own will. <laughs> he can't help it but listen. <laughs> Torture to listen to that Observer Live. I can't help myself, though. Anyway. Oh, Braun. Mm-mm-mm. Talking about everybody else and all these dirt sheets and everything. I mean, you could always bring back the old, uh, how's your territory doing? You know, you keep that one in your pocket to throw out on them next time. But I don't know. What's a dirt sheet anyway at this point? Now, does Sean Ross Sapp doesn't write anything down on paper and send it out to anybody. Like, is is that a dirt sheet? Uh, John Pollock's been around this game a long time. Post wrestling's fantastic. Like, are they a dirt sheet? You know, what what constitutes a dirt sheet? Just people that you don't like, or or what exactly is it? What is a dirt sheet? I'm not sure. Have you ever seen those giant dinosaurs? Their brain is the size of a walnut, like even though they're dinosaur? so big. Hadrosaur. If we could, if we could get like a Stegosaurus, a Brontosaurus, and Braun Strowman on Jeopardy together, who do you think it would come out with the most money? Hmm. Stegosaurus. It's possible. Yeah. That one's got plates on its back. Hey, listen, when we come back, we're going to do that Raw report. I promise this time. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, yes, it's time for the Raw report. Before we do that. No! R.I.P. Gilbert Gottfried. Really? Yeah. Oh, that yeah. sucks. Yeah, really. Tell me about it. All right. Well, mm. I'll allow uh, you to talk about Gilbert Gottfried instead of the Raw report. Well, I mean, <laughs> was he one of your favorite say. comedians? A very I would say unique... he was one of my favorite comedians, but I'm <laughs> sad that he's gone. A unique voice, that, that is for sure. And when peppered into certain situations, yeah, his stand-up was, was always pretty good. And a fun guy when he would appear on different shows, Howard Stern and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, just a certainly a legendary character. That's, that's for absolutely sure. So, RIP, this year sucks. Get to the stupid Raw report because it's stupid. Wow, it wasn't that bad. I mean, there were some questionable things on it. It opened up with Miz TV and Cody Rhodes. It was the Cody Rhodes show here tonight. These fans absolutely loved this guy. That he part wasn't it stupid. For all it was worth, they just cheered him. They went crazy. They go nuts. They're just so happy to see him. He sits down and Miz goes, are you done yet? And so he gets up and he just does more. And the fans are like, yeah, they just love this guy. And then we had a uh, brief promo segment where uh, Miz constantly corrected him on his his inappropriate usage of of, uh, these incorrect terms here in WWE. And then uh, he tried to attack him, but, uh, you know, Rhodes sent him packing. So not only did uh, Cody beat Miz, he wasn't even humiliated in the angle leading up to it. So, you know, when you pay a guy a lot of money, that's kind of what happens. They're doing it right so What was that? They're doing it right so far. I mean, the match with Seth. I was, told you all that. Oh well, yeah, look. I did. No, look, I, no. What you said was, yeah, that's what they have to do. And we, I think, everybody agrees that yes, you better put your best foot forward with somebody. But the problem always is, 
Vince's interest and all that sort of stuff, and we've always seen that slide. And in, in a case of Cody Rhodes, as you've mentioned, you can't let that slide. So there is going to be hyper-focus week after week, but this tie-in with Miz setting up to another match with Seth, which I know may be redundant for some people, but damn, the match was good. We got a great Miz and Cody sports entertainment thing, plus the bonus of a pretty damn good match. So two for two so far on Raw with Cody for me. We had uh, Veer versus Dominic. He just killed this guy. They sent him out on a stretcher. Poor Dominic just got uh, he got his uh, butt handed to him by by Veer. Who then? Hey, listen. I was a big fan of Veer. I was excited to see Veer debut. You guys, all of you worried about Cody, dude? Cody's gonna be fine. Veer is the one that you should be concerned about because man, total generic big mean guy. Total generic, nothing happening promo. I strike fear into every man. It's like they gave him all the Strowman's lines, and that was that was the end of that. So that's that doing, formula. Ugh. They ain't doing nothing for me right now. No, and that more. sucks too. Because when you see this guy elsewhere, when you hear him talk, it's like. I know they want him to have a distinct character, but man, I, I don't know if they set this guy off on the best foot. But we'll see. We had the damn dumbest thing with AJ Styles and Damian Priest. So they have a match, and the match is good because it's AJ and Damian Priest. And then all of a sudden, uh, Priest knocks AJ out of the ring. AJ's on the floor. Damian Priest stands in the middle of the ring. The lights go out. Then we see his face going, or something scary. They go to commercial. I thought, all right, well, you know, they do this sometimes. They want some stupid thing to lead you into commercial break because... They don't want wrestling during the commercial. <laughs> but anyway, they come back and we've just moved on. <laughs> I thought, what? And I rewound it. I miss, did I miss the count out? Did I miss, oh, what did I miss here? I miss nothing. The lights went out and then they went to commercial and came back and they moved on. There was no finish. There was no bell. The match technically is still going on because they never rang a bell. And then they cut backstage and AJ's all angry. He goes, I don't know what the hell that was. I was like, we don't either. So it's anyway, he said he's even, not he's not done with Priest and Edge. Good for us, huh? If I were him, I'd just say I'm done with it and then just do something else. But the problem here is I don't mind letting the story play out. That's that's fine. Okay. But like can somebody like when the when they come back from commercial, like everybody, even the Muppet show, even Kermit would be looking at Fozzie and Schroeder or whoever the hell they were going, hey, why did the lights go out? Let's have something. Go no, just the lights go out. They come back on. AJ's the only one upset. Nobody else is. Even he says it. Am I the only one upset here? It's like Kevin Owens later on asking if he's the only one who's crazy. Good question. Stupid. So then we had uh, Cody versus The Miz, which was a good match. And uh, you don't see a lot of really good Miz matches, but uh, Cody... You know, they had a very simple 12-minute basic match. They worked over the leg. They did the figure four spot. They did the whole nine yards. And uh, finally, Cody hits his springboard cutter. He hits the crossroads, pins him clean in the middle of the ring. Huge pop. Everybody goes crazy. And then uh, Seth Rollins. What is Seth Rollins' character? He dances out in his stupid suit. He's all wacky. I, it's like, I'm supposed to take this seriously when you're not taking anything seriously? You're dancing, you're posing, you do that stupid laugh that you stole from Sasha, and then uh, I guess we're going to do a match at uh, WrestleMania Backlash. I hate this character. It's better than the Messiah, but uh, that's about it. That's about it. You think he buys all of his clothes? I guess he gets to write all those off, because the amount of money he must be spending on wardrobe right now is incredible. We had uh, Tommaso Ciampa debut. And then uh, Ezekiel shows up, and he says, Hi, I'm Ezekiel. I'm Elias' younger brother. And Kevin Owens shows up, and he goes, That ain't Ezekiel, it's Elias. It's obviously Elias. And uh, Chamba goes, No, that's, that's Ezekiel. So I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, World Championship Wrestling, where they had a feud with Hulk Hogan and the Warrior, and the Warrior could appear and disappear in a cloud of smoke via magic. And one day, Hulk Hogan is in the locker room, and uh, he looks in the mirror, and he sees the warrior. But the warrior's not there. Only, in theory, only Hogan can see the warrior. 
So like all of his friends in the locker room and everybody else, they can't see the warrior. So they all think that Hulk Hogan is crazy. However, we can also see the warrior. So we are also crazy. As they're calling the heel crazy, we're also crazy because we can see the warrior. So the story here is that Kevin Owens thinks that this guy is Elias. You and I know it's Elias, but everybody else in the promotion thinks it's another guy. Can I ask and it's you not a heels, by the way. It's baby faces. Can I ask you a question? Go for is it. Is there any possible possibility that Elias was gone for so long with no reasoning at all that they've done a bunch of s- stuff recorded with him so they can actually like play the two off of each other somehow? Well, I'm sure they should do some sort of backstage segment with do, CGI. Do you think they actually have, two, have done that? Two guys? <laughs> is there any chance? Because that's going to be the only thing that makes this thing redeeming is any comedy that can come from like Elias and Ezekiel in the same place at the same time together. Hey, uh, you know Natalie Portman? I've heard of her, yes. Okay. My mind was absolutely blown. My, my daughter still is into Star Wars, so we got a Star Wars magazine at the, uh, at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the, uh, I think it's the Phantom, no, I can't remember which, I think it's the Phantom Menace. So uh, uh, Natalie Portman plays the queen, okay? Padme, she's the queen. And so she's got this entourage. Spoilers, everybody. And uh, she has this entourage of these other handmaidens or whatever. And uh, it turns out at the end of the movie that uh, one of the handmaidens is actually the queen. And the real queen has been a decoy the entire time. Okay? So anyway, I've watched this movie, I don't even know how many times, much to my dismay, because this is the one with Jar Jar Binks. But anyway, I've watched this movie so many times and I was, I was absolutely, I mean, it wasn't even like a question in my mind. Natalie Portman played herself and the queen. I, I, it was just like, okay, well, you know, they use CGI or whatever. And so she's playing both roles, okay? So I'm reading this Star Wars magazine to, to uh, Paisley the other night. And uh, it explains to me that Kira Knightley was the one who played the queen. Huh. I was like, What? And, and I like look at the him. picture, huh. and I'm like, no, that's the same person. But in fact, it's not. It's two different people. Damn. Does that say now, more unless about they you get, and... Unless Kira Knightley is playing Ezekiel, this thing just isn't going to work. Do all small white women look alike to you? No, Maybe but dude, I, even my wife, she was like, man, look at that. Huh? He looked I, I, online I, I, after I read it. Thought it was Natalie Portman, too. I didn't know that. I'm not the only one here, you idiots. Get out of here. So anyway, then we had uh, Naomi beating Liv Morgan because Rhea Ripley was in uh, protocol. So uh, they were going to do a tag team championship match, and they have to delay it because of uh, protocol. And so the challenger got pinned in two minutes by one of the champions. Because she probably would have lost in the tag match. Because of course she did. Because she probably would have lost in the tag match. It doesn't matter. Then beat her in the tag match then. I know. I know. I know. We had uh, the VIP lounge with Bobby Lashley. We've mentioned this before. Like they had a great, they had a great act with him and MVP. MVP talks for him. He's a scary looking guy. Now he's got to talk for himself. And there was a reason MVP talked for him. Crowds chanting, "What? They don't care." MVP comes out, and once MVP came out, MVP is such a great promo that like he lit a fire under Lashley, and they actually had a really good back and forth. Unfortunately, what it's leading to is another. Omos versus Bobby Lashley match, which I do not need to see. Plus, Omos is going to get the win, I'm sure, this time, so that's not good. We had a segment with uh, Reggie Akir Tozawa. There was a bachelor party, bachelorette party. Bunch of bunch of hoo ha occurred, and uh, they're going to have a double wedding next week. And uh, r Truth is going to be the officiant, as it is called. <laughs> Texas tornado rolls during that wedding, surely. Austin Theory is no longer Austin Theory. Literally in storyline, Vince decided Austin wasn't a very good name. So now he's just Theory. That's literally what he said. So now he's just Theory. And uh, he left, and then Owens showed up, and he's really upset about this Ezekiel Elias thing. So next week, they're going to have a lie detector test. Which, uh, you know what I'm going to do next week, everybody? What's that? I am going to teach you how to beat a lie detector test here on the air. You think I'm joking? I'm going to tell you how to beat it. it. 
And the answer is not by being a great liar. There is actually a trick. You know where I read it, by the way? Big right. Secrets. Remember we talked about that a while ago? Uh-huh. The Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe? Are you doing yeah. the wait, is can I guess right now? Go you for it. Do the, te- the breathing and the tack in the hand bit? As tack in the shoe. We'll talk about it next week. Okay. Raw women's champion Bianca Belair beats Queen Zelina. Uh, that was quick. And then afterwards, they shot an angle where Sonya Deville attacked her, and Sonya Deville has signed herself to be the next challenger for uh, for Bianca Belair. Ice Cube's kid said it the best. O'Shea Jackson Jr. on Twitter last night, Sonya Deville has attacked more black people than high blood pressure. Doesn't even make any sense. Nobody can still explain why she hated Naomi so much. Then she shows up and chop blocks Bianca Belair. But in reality, I'm actually really happy to see her back in the ring because I would be just fine with Adam Pierce being the only uh, executive that's just fine for me. Then we had uh, Chad Gable coming out. They had 45 minutes of TV time left, and so... Uh... Chad Gable came out and he talked 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 and he talked. Then they had Randy Orton and Riddle beating Alpha Academy. And we still had a half hour of television time left and no matches. The show was just going to go off the air a half hour early. But thankfully, them the Usos showed up and they wanted a unification match with Randy Orton and Riddle. And uh, Randy talked him out of it. And so instead, we got uh, Usos versus the Street Profits. Usos beat them. And uh, we're heading towards a unification match. Ron Smackdown Tag Team Championships. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. Um, hey, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. Is a time. That's when Lance Storm is going to be on. Lance Storm, Figure 4 Daily, live for our top-tier YouTube subscribers. Ho! Braun <laughs> stressed that CYB wasn't an indie promotion and doubled down on it when pressed. CYN. Well, it says CYB right here, but regardless. <laughs> Cover your butts. Well, what is it then? Control your narrative. I know, C-Y-N. but what is it if it's not an indie promotion? Apparently his isn't. I don't know. How is it not an indie promotion? I don't know. Hmm. What is it? I have no idea. Has I mean, anyone seen it? It like an indie promotion it? to me. I mean, I haven't seen it on national TV. Have you seen it on national TV? I haven't. I have not. I haven't even seen it on Seattle Public Access. Apparently, Sarah Logan is uh, going to control her narrative here. A, a Viking woman herself. Uh, That's I guess fine. Going She's to allowed on the show. Yeah. AC3 is allowed on the show. Yeah. But not Strowman. He's not allowed. No. Banned. Until he smartens up. When he smartens up, he can come on the show. Maybe. But he has to smarten up first. So we'll see about that. No apologies needed. Just the recognition, Braun. Look in the mirror. Think. Yeah, I don't need an apology. Think as hard as you can. Smarten up about it. Yeah, start start using your whatever brain you've got. That's it, okay? That's all I'm asking, you know? I'm not asking a lot, right? Right. Can you think of another wrestler at his age as, as much of a workhorse murder monster as Minoru Suzuki? He's wrestling Samoa Joe and Ishii in the same week, not to mention probably a dozen matches he had Mania Week. No, that's a real tough guy. That's Damn a real right. smart, tough guy. Mm-hmm. And we're out of here. We'll talk to you in an hour. Lance Storm. Figure four daily. And we'll talk to you here tomorrow, Wrestling Observer Live.